20-year lifespan, it won't offset the carbon footprint of making it. This first clip's a little bit ugly, but kind of true. There is um, nothing true about the statement that a wind turbine uh, does not become carbon neutral during its life cycle. It's not kind of true. It's not even almost true. He said some things prior to that that are kind of true, and maybe that's what she's referring to. But it's not kind of true that a wind turbine uh, offsets its carbon footprint and becomes carbon neutral. It is a thousand percent true. Take that I have here. Um, we don't actually know how to calculate that stuff. We think that we do, but uh, every time I see numbers and I see what goes into it, I can find at least one thing that they're forgetting about. The best way to respond to this comment is that <clears throat> we know how to calculate it, but we don't know how to ensure that the data we are using is 100% accurate. But it doesn't have to be. If you can calculate that within a degree of certainty, then you're basically close enough. It's never going to be perfect. But when you're estimating the carbon neutrality of something and, you know, you go through a scope three, is what they call it. It's called a scope three. You know, where you land in there helps a lot. So if if something becomes carbon neutral very late in its life cycle, then you can be like, eh, you know what I mean? Because there's a degree of variability in there. But a wind turbine becomes carbon neutral, you know, we estimate in about the first 10% of its life cycle. So we could be off by double or triple or quadruple and still be carbon neutral. A scope three is a cradle to the grave um, assessment of emissions. If you're going to build a wind turbine, start with the raw materials and the emissions that occurred in, in getting or gathering those raw materials, uh, the emissions that occurred transporting them, the emissions that occurred uh, turning them into parts, all of the emissions of everything that occurs during the life cycle of the wind turbine and even the emissions that would occur during its disposal. It's an extremely thorough assessment of emissions. But like I said, if the data isn't correct, then it's not going to be correct. But it doesn't have to be 100% correct. It can be 90% correct and it's good. It can be 80% correct and it's good. And before you ask, the reason we can't trust a lot of the data that we get is because of the sources it comes from, like other countries. But even if you don't trust your data, you can plug in like a worst case scenario for that data. So no, it's not perfect, but no, it doesn't have to be. It varies greatly because not only are all those emissions accounted for, but another thing that's considered is how much energy that wind turbine will generate over its life cycle. And those numbers can vary depending on where the wind turbine is, even where the wind turbine is positioned within a single wind farm, because it literally has to produce energy to become carbon neutral. Thanks.